while ago, have you won any battles this week? God's been fighting your battles for you. Taking this song out of here that we're getting ready to do and using it in your life. Amen. God fights our battles. Amen. This is how I fight my battles. Please get before him and we just lift up our praise. This is how I fight my battles. Stop what we're doing and stand. And Lord, I praise your holy name. This is how I fight.
our battles with us and for us, Lord. God, we just want to come and praise you tonight, Lord, and just open our hearts to you, Lord, and what you have to say tonight, God. Lord, I just ask that you would pour out your spirit over us tonight, Lord. Just let us be able to lay down the weight of the spirit, Lord. Just be able to worship you tonight. In your name we pray. Good. Good. Oh, 
Bless the Lord. Amen. God is awesome. Yes. Amen. 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 Now we're coming to a time of our worship or our tithes and offerings. And um, I just want to share this with you. This, this morning, Carol sent out a devotion and says, I press toward the goal for the prize and upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hey, and it just, God just spoke to me, and he just, uh, I mean, it just brought tears to my eyes. You know, it's just that, that verse and, and everything you had to go with, just, it brought tears to my eyes. And then when I stood up immediately, I said immediately, oh, yeah. Come in on, verse 19 here. in chapter 4 of Philippians, in the same book, God says, and, and my God shall Come supply all your needs. Hey. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now it says here, my God shall supply what? All. Not just some. Not just part. But all. That just blessed my heart. Amen. God immediately spoke that to my heart. So I know he was speaking to me. Amen. He said all. Right? And then it says, it goes on and it says, I'll supply all your need according to whose riches? His riches. His riches. Not the banks. Amen. Not the employers. Not the governments. His riches. Amen. That's where it's all coming from. It's his riches and glory. He is our supplier. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. God is awesome. And, and, and he will supply wherever you need be. All of you need. All right? Amen. Amen. If you have your offering, let's hold it up and pray over it. Amen? Amen. God, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, that you supply all of our, all our needs, Lord. All of it in your riches, in your glory, Lord. Not somebody else's, but you. We depend upon you, Lord. And, Lord, will we give to you? Wow, we, we, we stand in expectation of what you're going to do with what we offer you, Lord. And God, we just thank you for the, for tonight, Lord. We, we just thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the cross, Lord. We just thank you that you are our provider, Lord. And we thank you. Bless the offering. Bless the givers. And bless whoever receives it, Lord, because I know that you're going to multiply it. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Tell you what, we got a few more speakers in here, and I think that it just does a good job for us all around. Amen. Can you tell a difference, Dean? Amen. Amen. I like it. Amen. Oh man, hey, when y'all are not here, I can turn this way. There you go. Yeah, man, I tell you, I can listen to some hill song. And the go. neighbors here too. <laughs> They're like, oh, praise the Lord. But after about 15 minutes, they're like, we're gonna call the law on it. <laughs> man, man, I tell you what, this is it's nice. The Lord's blessed us. He's been blessing us. Amen. I, I'll tell you what. When we were singing that song, Holy Ground, and, I, and uh, I know that God has ordained this place for us. 
Yeah. I really believe that all my heart. Yeah. So let's just pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, this is sacred to you, Lord. This yes. ground, Father God, and we oh, yeah. just plead the blood on this place, Lord. Yes. yes. We thank you, Father God, for blessing your church, Lord. Oh, Father, we ask you to open doors, Father God, that no man can shut, Lord God, that we may grow and prosper, Lord God, and be a light on a hill, Lord God, for people to come, Jesus, and to find you and let this be holy ground, Lord God. So when they come through the doors, Lord, they can be saved, Lord God, that the anointing will hit them right when they come through the doors, Lord God. That this place, Father God, will be a sanctuary for the lost, Lord God, and the sick, Lord. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus, Lord. We claim this property, Lord God. Ah, oh, Jesus, we claim this property here, Lord God. And we thank you for it, Jesus. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now, I'll tell you what. If y'all want to start walking this place, y'all start walking it. I know, Jim, you've walked this place, haven't you? Y'all walk it, and one day we'll have a service, and we'll just, so whoever can go with me, we'll walk out through here, and, and we will go. Children, y'all are, y'all can be dismissed. I tell you what, you, you behaved yourself, didn't you? Yeah, come on now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord, let's give him a hand. <laughs> yeah, don't cry on me, honey, I love you. <laughs> she looked at it, she gave me the eye. Well, anyway, man, we are we 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 really are believing for God to do a mighty thing yes. here. Yes. And we got enough room here to spread our wings, guys, up on yes. this hill. Yes. You know, whenever I twenty years and whenever I hand this over to somebody else, they will have enough to where they can grow. I want to see this thing grow not only in my generation, but the next generation too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think that this is a good property. How about you, Walt? You think this is a good place? I able think to it's put a good it down. Place. Yes. I man. think we're on the verge. Amen. Amen. We're on the verge. On the verge. Amen. Yeah, guys, y'all need to be praying. Amen. Yeah. I'm Amen. talking about you. I mean, on the verge. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm not talking about just one little piece. I'm talking about the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing. You want to get up there and, and spur them on a little bit and let them know a little bit about what's, you know, if you have anything to tell them. Yes, you do. Yeah. Grab yourself a microphone and tell these people some stuff. All right, guys. Amen. 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 Get the red one. <laughs> I think you got the red one. Yeah. I always get the red one. There you go. I haven't got a definitive answer yet. But I have made two proposals. Uh, with Pastor Tim's permission, to the gentleman that owns this whole thing. All the land, all the way down to the street, the building and everything. I went to meet him a couple of days ago, give him that proposal. Him and his tax man are now reviewing that proposal. Tonight. Tonight, he just texted me and asked me about an item I had put in there, which is a good thing. He texted me a couple of days ago, and he said, it's looking good, Walt. Amen. It's looking good. Come on. He's already agreed to sell us the land over here if we can't do this. But, folks, with what I have proposed to him, if everybody pays their tithes and gives the pledges like they have pledged, with that and the rent, that we'll have coming in on the rest of the building, we've got enough finances yeah. to take care of the obligation oh, yeah. of buying the whole thing. Yeah. What we're thinking about, and I don't know whether it wants to go this far, but the whole front section up here on the right side as you come up is going to be available. I'm meeting with the building inspector tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and we're going to go over that section up there about how many people we can put up there. My guesstimate is somewhere around 228. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if we need to, we can put a 12-foot addition for the stage area for all the singers and the music. We can put a 12-foot addition out on that end, and we could probably get 240 or 250 in there. Amen. If we get that many people, that is as faithful as you are. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes. Come on. Yeah, we need that, don't we, brother? Yeah, if we get that many people as faithful as you are, 
we can go on the other side of the road Amen. and build a sanctuary that holds four or five hundred of them. Come on, folks. If you put God down here, that's where he's always going to stay. But if you put him up here, you've got to keep climbing to get up to where God's at. And God's got some good things for his people. Amen. 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 We serve a big God. Amen. So why, if we got a big God, why don't we have big dreams? A lot of times, you know, we adjust our dreams to our self uh, image of ourselves. So if we don't feel good about ourselves, our dreams are way down here. And we serve this big Come old on. God, and, and he's like, you know, I want yes. to stretch you, and I want to grow you up to be a mighty woman or a man of God. And, and, and we feel bad about ourselves, so we don't believe for much. Oh, they can have it, but we can't have much now. I tell you what, you're in the wrong pastor if y'all thinking that right now. Because I tell you what, I'm believing God. If we got to stretch, we'll stretch. Yeah. Whatever, Lord God, I want to grow, though, man. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to, at the end of my days, lean upon my staff like Jacob did, and I want to worship. And I'm going to regardless, but I want to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? I want to have a good time doing this. So I think that's a good report right there. It's a good report, guys. I'll tell you what. It's a good report that God has opened a way that we can actually step into something. Yeah, you know, it's just like him opening the way for the the, the uh, Israelites going into the promised land. They couldn't do that on their own, but when he opened the way, yeah. they were able Amen. to take the land. Yes, Amen. and I tell you what, he's doing the same thing for us. He's opening the way so we can walk in. And I tell you what, if we walk in, we're going to inhabit. <laughs> I promise you, we're going to inhabit. We're going to have a good time inhabiting. You know what I'm saying? And I've been talking to some people in the church and. We're talking about getting a daycare up and running. Amen. And yeah. uh, godly, I mean, New Life Christian Ministries of Rocky Mount Daycare, yeah. to where they can bring their children and have a godly atmosphere. Yeah. I tell you, man, we are, we ain't thinking slow, guys. We really want to take off with this thing. And we're going to inhabit this place. And I tell you, what, we're going to have children all over the place. Come on, Dwayne, ain't that right, brother? Amen. Come on, man. Yes. Yes. And I tell you what, we have people that. It's on their heart to do that. And they came to me, and they's like, hey, this is on my heart. And I was like, eh, you know. I'm, yeah. So I was over picking up some chairs with Dwayne one day over at the Foursquare Church. And the guy told me, he said, you know, we got about 50 children coming here every day for daycare, 50 children. And I was like, you do? And he said, yeah, and the lady, I know her name's Liz Dowdy. Uh, she has... How long have you known her? 40 years? 40 years. And I've known her for about 30 myself. Um, and she said she's the area director. She trains for these things, trains people to open daycares, you know, in the state of Virginia. She's licensed to do this and get them up and running. And, I mean, I just had talked to some people just a day before about doing a daycare. And here this comes and lands in my lap that we have inroads to a person that can train us and get us up and running. So I'm like, you know, duh. I'm like, Jesus, come on now. <laughs> two plus two in this situation is four. You know, lay it out there yeah. for me, Jesus, so I can follow you, you know. Yeah. So I'm not going to say no whenever Jesus says, you know, opens the way like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you want to follow him. So if he's like, yeah, I'm like, yes, sir. Because it ain't me. I'm the pastor. But he's the Lord. You know, I'm not the Lord. He's the Lord. And whenever he says, hey, I want to do this. Be a light on the hill, and people come up that driveway and see this nice place. They'll say, "What's going on over here?" It's a spirit-filled church. Yes, and the children's going to love it. They're going to come. And they're going to have a good time and laugh. Oh, I want to go back there, yeah, Mom. I heard they got. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good stuff right there. Because if you can get the children coming, yes. all the adults will come. Right. I tell you what, Mandy, right here, she used to go. She was over at uh, over at New Life in Roanoke, and. And uh, Pastor Polly and Henry Buckman yeah, was over there. Yeah, and, and she got in there with them. And before long, she's like, Mama, guess where we're going? <laughs> yeah. And there goes Mama with her over there, you know. If you get the children. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, God's doing something. Amen. He's helping us out here. Yeah. You know, don't look at all obstacles, guys. I'm telling you, guys are helping us out here. So let's follow through with him. Amen. 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 Come on now. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be doing it, and somebody else is going to be overhead and that stuff, man. I'm thanking God for that. Yes, yes sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, <clears throat> Let's look in our Bibles tonight. Let's break the bread in the name of Jesus. 
Look in Romans 5, chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And uh, I got so busy today, I didn't get the scriptures up, but y'all had to look it up the old times way. Or at least on your, on your phone over there. Say amen when you're ready for me to go for it. Amen. King James Version, and I'm going to do it in the Message Version. Kim, King James, oh, he got an amen back there on the King James. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and not only so, it says in verse 3, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. I know, come on, guys, we're going to get through this tonight. Knowing that tribulations work patience, and patience experience and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Can I get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which is given to us? Yeah. So when we go through the battle, we go through the battle. The Lord says when you go through the valley, he said, my Holy Spirit will shed abroad in your heart, my love. So you won't be by yourself even though you go through a valley. He said, my heart, your heart will be tender toward me. Yeah. So when you're going through tribulations, it actually prepares your heart for his love to be shown through. Oh, it breaks us up inside. I tell you what, man, when you go through some stuff, I don't like going through stuff, guys. But when you do go through it, the Holy Spirit says, I will be there to yeah. break that thing open and just shed my love through yeah. your heart. Oh, man, I tell you what, Jesus is the Lord of the mountaintop, but he is the Lord of the valley. And the times that I really had very close encounters with Jesus Christ usually was in the valley. Come on now, it was in the valley where I came to know him yeah. and his power. It's whenever he faced down the devil face to face and said, this is my buddy right here. This is my, this is my son. He's blood bought. He's not yours anymore. Get your hands off of him. And Jesus stood up and he said, I'm Lord. And I tell you what, whenever the devil comes out of the cracks and he, just, he, he sits there and he faces the Lord, he backs down from the Lord. Oh, yeah. Now, he may growl at us, but I tell you what, he will not growl at the Lord. He takes off quick. Takes off quick from the Lord. And we are in the Lord. He is in us. Yeah. It says that we are in Him and He is in us. And He is in the Father and the Father is in Him. But I tell you what, you can't get no. You just got a covenant right there with the Lord. Yeah. 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 So don't be afraid, man. Yeah. So when we go through something, just say, Lord, you said in your word that the Holy Spirit was going to shed abroad that love in my heart. I tell you what, perfect love cast out fear. Yeah. 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 Oh, Lord God, as I go through the valley, Lord God, and as I go through a tight circumstance in my life, you mean, Lord God, that your love is going to cast out the fear that I would get, Lord God, normally by going through that valley? Yes. He will meet us in the middle of that valley. And he will cast out the fear because we will feel his love. I was just chatting with some friends last night. My father died in front of me when I was 11 years old. Uh, my mother was crying in the middle of the night, and I went in there, and I was 11 years old. I tried to bring him back. My dad died in front of me. That's pretty rough. And, and, for the, and I was called to the ministry. And for the longest time, man, it just worked on me, being around people that were dying. And one time I went in, and I was with the lady. And I fell asleep on the couch. And I looked up, and, uh, and you know, I, I woke up. And she was looking at me with a love and just a peace and a joy. She was, on, she was on the verge of going to heaven. She was right there. And she had that peace, like Jesus was right there with her. The doctors and the nurses would come into the room and sit there and watch her. You know what I'm saying? They'd want to be around her. And from that point on, I had victory over that in my life. I didn't fear it. I didn't, uh, I didn't want to get away from it anymore. I was in the ministry, and I didn't mind being in the room when somebody was going to be with the Lord because I seen the glory. Right there where I used to run from, I seen God's glory in that room. And I was like, and I didn't know I was being healed, but the Lord healed me from that point on to where I was like, I'm okay now, Lord. Yes. I mean, he got me in here. He healed me yeah. up in here. Right. Where I used to avoid his situation, I didn't avoid it no more. He didn't bother me because I was like, Jesus meets people on the other side. He's just right there. I mean, I just almost seen the Lord in that place like where he had his hand out. Yeah. And that lady went on to be with the Lord. Oh, yes. And then I was like, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Amen. You know, we have to be okay with things yeah. like that. Because Jesus says, you know, in the valley, that's uh -huh. where he shows himself off at. Come on. Now, I'll speak to people's needs in the house. 
See, people are going through some stuff, and you're fighting with it even tonight. You're going through the valley, and you're fighting it with even up in here in the church building. You're fighting with it tonight. In your mind, you're fighting with things. The Lord says, you know, as you go through this, and you will go through it, and you may crawl a little bit, but you'll get up and you'll walk through this valley that you're going through, and my oh, yeah. love will be shed apart in your heart. Yeah, yeah. It will come, and it will be in your heart to where you will have victory over this in your life. You're not going to have to deal with it for the rest of your life. The Lord wants us to be healed up. To where we don't have to fight the same battle over yes, and over Lord. and over again. He wants us to be able to have victory in that area. In the name of Jesus. I do not believe anything else, guys, but victory. You mean if we can't have victory in one place, we can't have it at all. Come on. If he can steal, if the devil can steal victory from us in one place, he can steal everything. But if we can stand up against him in every way, then we can keep victory in every way. It means that we can have that. Yes. We have a covenant with the Lord. We believe yeah. that in our hearts, that we have a covenant, and we're going to continue to walk in that covenant. But even if we go through tribulations, the Lord says, I will be there in the midst yeah. with you. Yeah. Fear no evil. Yes. Amen. Fear no evil. Yes. Your rod and your Amen. staff, they comfort me. Yes. Oh, man, I tell you what, man, even as we go through it, the Lord is there. Yes. Oh, man, I thank you, Jesus, that you're there with us. Yes. Now, here's message. The message Bible just breaks it down a little in modern-day language. And it's uh, verse 3 through 5 in Romans. And it says, there's more to come. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praises even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience within us and how passionate... And patience in turn forges and tempers steel, a steeled virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. An alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our life through the Holy Spirit. And what are you saying in the King James? I like the King James. Amen. He says this. He says, you know, my love will be shed abroad in your heart. It will, it will just break open. I'll tell you what, man. When Jesus breaks open his love in our hearts, no enemy can stand before Amen. us. Amen. Because the enemy works in fear. Amen. He works in fear and intimidation. But whenever Jesus says you're in the middle of the valley and my Holy Spirit sheds my love abroad in your heart, you're able to face down the enemy in the middle of the valley that you're going through. Right in the middle of it all. In the middle of the fear. And he says, I'll give you, I'll give you victory over the fear and you're going to be able to face down the enemy. I'll tell you what, man. Can I get an amen on that? Is it just me getting a little bit uh, excited? But is it is it the Lord speaking to some people tonight? Come on. Come on, Pastor. I don't like the valley. I don't like the valley. There's sometimes whenever I went through the valley, I didn't know if I was going to live in this physical body anymore. I've been there. Throwing up blood, spitting blood, had an artery all broken up in my chest. I mean, just things that you just don't know. And I was like, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I want to see your face. I want to see you, Lord. Yeah, and I tell you what, if you're sitting there, you know, and you're bleeding, and you're going to say, I want to see you, Lord. Amen. You better ask him, say, Lord, I'd like to see you in a while. But I need to have your victory now. Oh, man. <laughs> because I was like, I may go see him for sure. I was thinking, you know what I mean? And a lot of people know my testimony, man. But I got, I got sick. I mean, I was sick in the hospital. And, and, and uh, I woke up in the bed. And I looked around. And there was all these people from the church laying around me, just standing around me. And the Lord just spoke to my heart. He said, there's, there's my face. Yeah. And I was like, Lord Jesus. I said, right here in the middle of this valley, Lord God, there you are standing around me, Father, in your people. And I tell you what, he kept his word to me. I seen yes. his face. I seen it in the elders of the church standing around me and believing for my healing. And I tell you what, I came up out of that, up out of that valley that I was going in. Right. See, the Lord knows how to bring us up out of the valley. He may allow us to go into it, but He will bring us out victorious. Right. Yeah. We are not going to be put to shame if we put our trust in Him. We can trust Him. 
We don't only love him, we trust him. I loved the Lord a long time before I trusted him. But I trust him as well. He's always been there for me. I didn't even know he was there and he was there for me. I had three major uh, pastors in my life. Three. I didn't go from church to church. Uh, I stayed with about three pastors in my whole, my whole Christianity. And those three pastors had different temperaments. And each one of them God used in my life in a different way. One of them was like a father. I mean, I had dreams and visions in his ministry. He was like a father to me. He brought me into his house. He, had, he cooked dinners. You know, I sat around with his family. I had the love of the father through that pastor. And another pastor was in my life, and he was there to disciple me and train me. And the Lord was in all of that, you see. And I can go through, and I see God's hand in every area of my life as he matured me through the process of being healed. He had me with these men and these women of God, and I was being nurtured, and I was being healed along the way. Amen. Until one day I stepped out, and the Lord said, now it's your turn. Yes. Now it's your turn. That's right. But I couldn't force the hand. See, I could have said, Lord, 10 years ago, I could have said, Lord, I guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk on water. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm getting out here, and I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to do something for you, Lord. And I'll tell you what, if I pushed his hand and made it happen too quickly... I would not have been ready for it. Right. Oh, man, you can have the anointing in your life, and it will not be the right season for you to step out into that anointing. Amen. And I tell you what, if you don't enjoy the season that you're in, you can be miserable. Right. Because yeah. the anointing's on you. Yeah. And you're like, I know the cause of God's on me, but I'm hating the situation I'm in now because i got to sit down and listen instead of get up and share. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we got to sit there and listen. Yeah. And wait upon the Lord for the right season amen. for us to step out into it. Right. Can amen. I get an amen? Amen. Amen. amen? I tell you what, that's a hard lesson to learn right there. Yeah. Because it's like we're in a cocoon. You know, we in a tight space. Have you ever felt like you was in a tight space? And you couldn't move. You're like, Lord, I'm in the valley, Father God, and I can't get away from it, Lord. I can't move. I can't get away. Have you ever been in a tight space? You couldn't feel like you couldn't even move. I thought I was going crazy in my life at times, man, because I couldn't get away from it. And I'd say, Lord, I was like, is it time for me to leave? No, nope, it ain't time for me to leave. I'd go out and I'd get away from the house because I didn't want to disrupt my wife and my child, you know, and Mandy, and they have enough to deal with. She's in school. I'd go out on the greenway, get way back up in there, and I would just bend over, man. I'd be crying. Before the Lord. Just letting you know, I was in a tight space. Yeah. The Lord had me there. Yeah. He had me there for that season. Yeah. I look back on it now, and it makes perfect sense. But it did not make sense to me at the time. The only thing I was doing was hurting on the inside. Yeah. I was like, Lord, you said that you would be with me through the valley. And sometimes the valley, you know, this is going to be hard for some of you to understand. I think everybody in here is pretty mature. Sometimes the valley is not really the valley. Sometimes the valley is only our perception of it. The Lord's actually training us through that situation, through those the crucible of the relationships that we're in. We can't. We, we may be battling with things in our mind because we always have the devil trying to whisper to us. All oh, yeah. the you know, just whisper. Oh, you're out of the will of the Lord. Oh, the Lord's done left you. Look at those people over there. They hate you. You know. And then all of a sudden you're like, man, I'm miserable. Because I'm not where I want to be. And the devil's just whispering away into my ear things that, they, that are not true. Right. So we're going through the discipline process of, with the Lord. And we need to just hunker down and say, Lord God, you are the Lord of my days. And whenever I get older, Lord God, I will thank you for what I'm going through now. But right now, it is hard. It is hard. Amen. Yeah. Listen to this. The Lord can give us a simulated cocoon in our life. You know, it transforms the ugly caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. And I remember one of my friends said the other day, you remember a couple, of, about a month ago, uh, it was uh, some uh, guys from uh, you know, Spanish, you know, they were from Brazil, and he looked at me, and I, and I <laughs> before service, he said, oh, Tim, Tim, broken English, Tim, Tim, you caterpillar, you worm, <laughs> now you butterfly. How? How? I looked at him and I was like, who you call a worm? 
I was like, man, I know you. <laughs> Who you called a worm or not to? He's like, no, no. He said, how did that happen? Because he knew. I mean, I've been around that man for decades. And he was like, man, I've seen a change. And I was like, I don't, I'm the same man. To me, I'm the same man. Yeah. But he said, something has changed. And when people see it, when people see it, yeah. You hear me, man? It ain't a God. I may look in the mirror and I see Tim and he's receding the hairline and all that, you know, hurting in the mornings a little bit more than I used to hurt. But somebody sees some glory. Amen. Somebody seen the Lord's hand yeah. in it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the cocoon, yeah. you know, whenever I went over on the greenway and I bent over and I was crying before the Lord, I was like, Lord, deliver me. Bring me out of this, Lord God, where I'm at. Where I'm at, Lord God. I don't like it, Father. Yes, Lord, I, it's a good income and all that. But Lord, I. I don't want to be here anymore. I feel like I'm, I'm trapped, Lord. I can't move. I can't spread my wings, Lord. I can't move in the anointing, Father God, in the way I want to know. move. Father God, it's a, it's a closed-in season to yeah. the place where I got right with the Lord. I mean, I've been over. And I was, you've got to know, whenever you've been over like that, you know, a man just said, and you start just to see the tears hitting the pavement in front of you. If you're broke, you know, you're right there with the Lord. You're saying, Lord, whatever you're trying to do, Lord God, let it be done. Because I'm at the end of myself. You'll be in comfortable situations and be at the end of yourself. Oh, You can be in a good paying job and be at the end of yourself. Yeah. Oh, man, I tell you what, the Lord knows how to get us right where we need to get. Amen. I tell you, man, He knows. Yes. And He knows. I tell you what, man, getting mature in the Lord is not an easy process. And I know I'm speaking to some people tonight. Man, you know, as we grow, and as I grow as a pastor, Amen. as I grow as a pastor, guys, I want you to see things in me and say, you know, that right there is honest. That right there is something I can grab a hold of. Amen. That right there, I see that man's love for the Lord, and I want to be, I want to have some of that. Yeah. And I want to look at you, and I want to say, I want to have some of that Amen. too. You know, we look at each other as we go in this, and we prosper, and we become closer to the Lord and His Holy Spirit starts to fall upon us that we see each other and we get really hungry from that process that you see a pastor that isn't perfect but a pastor that loves the Lord Amen. and then you can trust him Praise God. you can trust him to pray for you and to see your youngins being born again into the kingdom Amen. and I'm believing for that man Amen. 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 so I tell you what sometimes we're in a cocoon for a point in time it's like being in the desert John the Baptist was in the desert for a point in time. And he stayed in the desert until God called him out. Yes. And sometimes we are appointed to be in a cocoon and a tight space in our life to where we really would rather be somewhere else for an appointed time. And the thing about it is, is when a butterfly is in that cocoon, it is forming into something else. When that worm actually goes into that cocoon, uh, it turns into a butterfly. And if you get in there and you try to help that butterfly, if you see it starting to come out of that cocoon and you get in there with your hands, your flesh, and say, I want to help that butterfly get out of that tight space, mm. you actually will take away the life of the butterfly. Amen. It will never prosper. It will never have the wings that it should have had. It will never fly the heights that it should have had. If you go in and rescue it too soon, you got to let it come out on its own. you got to allow it to come out on its own. And as it comes out on its own, it will fly. But if you go in and try to break it open and try to get it out, all of a sudden it will just, it won't be able to fly. Oh, man, I tell you what, us Christians, sometimes I'll see and I'll say, I wish I could help. But sometimes you just can't get in there and help them. you got to allow the process to come out so they can fly whenever they come out. They can soar in the name of Jesus. They can move in the anointing. Amen. Yes. In their life because they have went through the cocoon. I tell you what, sometimes we want to be uh, rescued from the cocoon. Yes. We want to be saying, Lord, help me, Jesus. Take me this cocoon, this tight space away from me. Show the pastor, Lord God, that he may open a door for me. And I tell you what, this pastor will open doors. If I have an ability to bless a person, I will bless you. I will bless you. I am not here to cause anybody no harm. I don't have a religious spirit. I have a spirit of the Lord. I want people to blossom and spread their wings, man, and be able to function in the kingdom. But sometimes the Lord has you in a cocoon for a season, and it ain't a thing I can do about it. 
Because right. if I get in there and do something about it, I'll hurt you. And not even mean to you. That's right. You'd be like, man, why am I limping all through life? Pastor Ken rescued me. He, he, he got me busy. Too quick. Sometimes we don't know it's too quick until it. we're out in it. Man. A, it's a good word, isn't it, brother? Amen. <laughs> it's a good word up in here. Amen. This is a Sunday morning word. Yes. Amen. But y'all need to hear it. Yeah. Amen. We need to hear this. I tell you, man, we need to not give up in the middle of it all. We need to say, Lord, here you are. Here you are getting me ready for something, and I want to know. I want to walk into it, Lord. And even if I bend over, Lord God, and I start to weep before the Lord, and the tears just start covering the ground, it's before the Lord you cry. It's before the Lord. You, that's kind of like a worship to me. Yes. When I get like this and I start to weep before the Lord, it is just the purest of moments. You know, I'll be going through it too, man. You know how it is to go through it with the Lord and you sit there and you start to weep. You ain't no closer to the Lord than ever. That right there, right then there. So start whispering your heart to him as you're breaking before the Lord. Start whispering it to him. Say, Lord, I love you. And I worship you, Lord God, but I'm hurting, Father. Open a door so I can get out of this situation. But as you cry, man, I tell you what, that is a form of worship to the Lord. Amen. Ooh, man, I tell you what, we're right there close to him when we get in that situation because we're not prideful. We're not full of our own ambitions. We're not full of ourselves. We are broken before the Lord. We're saying, Lord, oh, Jesus, I love you, Lord. And I'm at my hand, Father God. I need your help, Jesus. I need you, Lord, in my life. I need you to have your way. Open the door for me, Lord. Amen. And some people say, why didn't you walk on out on your own? I was like, I knew better. <clears throat> I knew better. I just knew. You know, it's like John the Baptist leaving the desert too soon. You just know. I ain't leaving until the Lord tells me I got to go. So I tell you what, whenever he opens a door, you better not stay. You better take off. Yes, yeah. ma'am. You better take off. You know, sometimes we believe in small dreams, don't we? Mm -hmm. See, the Lord has a word here for us tonight. And he wants us to know, man, we are in it. Who, man, spirit-filled people get in it. He will draw us up into the crucible, man. And we want the freedom of the worship. We want the freedom in the Holy Spirit. We do have that. But as we allow the Holy Spirit to get a hold of us, he fashions us into the image of Christ. No more, man. I tell you what, we are we are people of holiness and beauty. And it's strange to other people because the Holy Spirit will grab a hold of us. And we will say, I'm going through a hard time, and he will bring beauty out of it. Yeah. He will bring beauty yeah. up out of the ashes. He will bring us up out of it. Just as he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he will bring us out of our bondage, and he will make it beautiful yes, to us. He Amen. will make it beautiful to us. Yes, Lord God, I thank God that he Amen. makes it beautiful to us. He makes it, he, he resurrects us. Uh, he re-resurrects us. Even in our Christianity, as we get to our end, Amen. he resurrects us again. Yeah. He makes something beautiful up out of all that. Even you, if we are at our end in relationships and stuff, he makes it beautiful again. Amen. He knows how to get it again. Yes. He's a Lord that knows how to get us there again. Oh, Lord God, I may have been in your glory before, Lord God, but I believe that I'm going to be there again, Lord. Amen. That I'm going to see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. That I'm going to see you, Lord God. Amen. People are going to be saved and spirit-filled, Father. In beauty, Lord God. Not just in, just, you know, mechanical. You know what I'm saying? Where you see people just mechanically doing it. But in the beauty of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People start to get broken. <laughs> oh, man, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. You see the puddles starting to form around their feet because they've been weeping before the Lord. Yeah. Oh, man, I tell you what, lives get changed that way. Right? Yeah. yeah. Man. Lives get changed. Yeah. So if you're going through it, know that the Lord has a purpose. Yeah. He has a purpose. He says, yeah. my eyes on the sparrow. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Yeah. It's my eyes on the sparrow. Yeah. He said, a sparrow won't fall to the ground without me knowing about it. Right. How much more are you worth than many sparrows? <sighs> Receive the Lord tonight. Receive the Lord. He says, my eyes on the sparrow. Amen. He said, what you're going through, he said, I will use it for good. Ooh, come on, guys. Start to worship the Lord right here with me for a moment. Yes, we worship your Lord God.
We thank you, Jesus, that your eye, Lord God, is on the sparrow, Lord. And here we are, we're coming as children, Lord God. We are of you, Lord. It's how much more, Lord God, are we worth the many, many sparrows, Lord God. We thank you for that, Father, that you are moving, Lord God. We are not bitter, Lord God. We are not hurting to the point, Lord God, where we're hating, Father God. This has a purpose, Lord, and it's going to be beautiful, Lord God. Fashion us, Lord God, into your image, Lord. Help us to be people, Lord God, Christian people, because of who we have a relationship with, Lord. Not because of what church we go to, but because we know Jesus. And we hang out with him on a daily basis. And we love him. And we go to him when we're high and when we're happy. And we go to him when we're hurting too. Ooh, he brings beauty out of both of them when we're hurting and when we're happy. I tell you what, I like it when we're happy. But when we're hurting, he brings it out too, doesn't he? He brings beauty out of that. He knows how to do that. He knows how to heal us in that area to where we can really move and be beautiful in him. I tell you what, we have to know him in our hurt right? as much as we know him in our, in our beauty and in our joy. I tell you what, man, sometimes it's easy to laugh in the Lord. Other times we've got to choose it and say, Lord God, make something beautiful out of all this. Yeah. And he does. Amen. He does. In his own timing, and they don't have anything to do with us, guys. It has to do with the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, man, I see it on you today. I see you people out here. It's getting a hold of you, ain't it, guys? Yeah. It's looking right to you. It's getting a hold of you, ain't it? The Lord wants to know. He's like, man, I see what you're going through. I see what you're going through. I see the stretching. I tell you, the stretching in your life, it is for a purpose. Oh, man, it is for a purpose. And the thing of it is, sometimes we go through the stretching, and we can be so blessed in the process. Oh, man, things can we can be blessed. I mean, I was going through, and I was being blessed. I would go to the man, and I would say, hey, I'm thinking about getting out of here. Well, here's another $10,000. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? And still going through it. I mean, like, I want to take off my company jacket. I'm out of here, you know? And going through it and, and, and being blessed and hurting to the point where you're weeping before the Lord at the same time. You got blessings and you're hurting so bad you can't hardly stand it. You'd be willing to give up all the blessings, but the Lord's lavishing it on you and saying you're right in the middle of my will even though you're hurting. Even though you're going through it, you're right there in the middle of my will. Have you ever been there? Amen. Where you're saying, I'm blessed I'm going in and I'm blessed going out. Right. The Lord has watched over me and I am doing well, Amen. but I'm hurting at the same time. I'm being stretched Amen. and I feel him being. Amen. Mm. I tell you what, man, our God is good. Yeah. He ain't got no reason to complain and go to him broken anyway, saying, Lord, you done blessed me and you done set me on my feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, but I'm hurting. <laughs> And I want to get out. I want to get out of here, Lord. You hear me, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a guy. I'm going to close in this. In closing, guys. There was an Olympian. His name was Sean White. Now, Sean White, he, he was slick. See, uh, in the Winter Olympics, man, that boy was a snowboarder. And I don't know if you know anything about Sean White. I, I didn't know a whole lot about him. But that man, you know, at an older age, he got that gold medal. Yeah. He did. He did. He hit those things, you know. And I was like, that is cool. I watched him excel. That man excelled in his craft. He really went to the next level. You know, whenever everybody else says, you know, you need to go and retire. He said that he went to the next level. Yeah. Think about Sean White. He had, whenever he was young, he had a heart condition. And the, uh, the people. The doctor says, don't push him much. Don't push him much. He had three operations as a child. Don't push him much. And you know with the mama, just loving the mama, the mama probably says, oh, Sean, you take it easy. You take it easy. If, you, if you're raised hearing something like that, it's easy to aim low. That man did not aim low. He went on and got gold medals. He is soared in his craft. He didn't listen to the doctors. He went on and did what he was supposed to do. We have to do the same. We've got to get out there, man, and I'm saying, I don't care what the doctors say. I've got to move on. 
I've got to believe God has yeah. more for me than this. I'm not going to listen to those voices when I was little. I'm going to shed that, and I'm going to believe in a big God. Yeah. I'm tired of living in the past. I believe in a big God with big dreams. And I want to enter in it. I don't care what age I'm at, Lord God. I want to enter in. I'm tired, Lord God, of letting the voices of the past keep me down. And Sean White, man, he went on. And whenever they said retire, he went on and got gold medals. And I tell you what, I'm a pastor that believes that. That we can move on. And I don't care what's been said over us. What we're going through. What cocoons we may be in. The Lord has a purpose. And he has big dreams. And he has big dreams for us here. We have a big place to fill here, guys. We've got a mountainside here that the Lord wants us to inhabit. I know his blessings are on us. And his anointing is in the house. He didn't bring us here just to turn us around and put us back the other way. He has a purpose. And he has a purpose for us being what we're going through right now. Some of you may be going through the valley. Say, Lord God, help me to learn what I need to learn. That I may come on out of this valley, Lord God. That I may be delivered, Lord. And that I may fly, Father God. Because I want to be used in the kingdom. Yes, yes Lord. I, I tell you what. God, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you here tonight, Lord. I tell you what. This is a, I love the movement of the Holy Spirit. And in closing, y'all stand with me. Y'all stand with me here. Now in closing. See, the Lord has his hand on us here. Hey, how many of y'all get out there, man, you can't wait to get back? When you get back, you're just like, man, the Lord is just here with me. But I'll tell you what, Satan gets us sometimes in the middle of the week. You're saying, I'm going to get to church. I'm going to get back in the presence of the Lord. There's an there's a easiness and a moving there in the presence of the Lord. There's freedom up here in, in Rocky Mountain. There's a freedom in this house right here to, to move in the Lord. But I'll tell you what, as we move in the Lord, he's fashioning us to be able to equip others to know his presence. I tell you what, I thank God for what he's doing yes. in the house. I thank God that he has his hand on us in this place in the name of Jesus. Now there's people in here tonight that are going, they're right in the middle of that cocoon. I mean right in the middle of that hard space, you know what I mean? Whew. Right in the middle of it. And you're saying, Lord, I can't. I have been bent over this week, Lord, crying before you, Lord, to deliver me. I'm not going to ask the Lord to deliver you. I'm going to ask the Lord to have his way in you and make it beautiful. That you may fly, that you may soar in the anointing. That you may speak your blessings and see them come to pass in your life. That you may see that happening in your life upon your children and upon their children's children. So if that is you tonight, you say, I'm in a cocoon. I need help. I need somebody to come into agreement. I can't get out. And I've been asking the Lord. I want you to come up here and stand with me. Because the Lord has been dealing with people in here tonight. There's been a move of the Holy Spirit. And I sensed it. Yes, Lord, I sensed it. Sense the Lord in this place tonight. Yeah, Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord.